Hey guys, well, I just been humping along trying to get stuff done because I'm so far behind with everything. And I'll tell you what, when it rains, it pours. It just absolutely dumps on me. I go through like people have like bad days or bad weeks. I have like bad months. Um, anyway, guys, obviously, obviously know about the truck engine, which that through persistence, I, I mean, this thing runs like a cut cat it does it runs great um so this is the old 4270 engine this old 510 backhoe i'll just give you the list of problems how this poor old girl she just never has been maintained uh, i mean these guys have just scabbed wires everywhere i mean it's just uh it's disaster it's been a disaster of a project Okay, so the list of problems when I tore this engine apart. Let's go over here and let's show you this cylinder head so I can more clearly explain to you what happened and what I found when I tore this engine down. Uh, here's the old cylinder head right here. Let's get the old light on it. As you can see, down here on this valve, look at that retainer. That was like that when I tore it apart. look at the look at the valves recessed back into the head i mean that is one worn out son of a bitch right there i didn't even want to mess with it i just said if you can find me another head get me another head so anyway that was one of the problems with it the other problem was it was sticking pistons i mean they were scuffed one hole was really bad it was i couldn't believe that it was still turned over it had almost melted the piston in it uh this thing's probably got twenty thousand hours on it i mean i remember and these guys are good people they are don't get me wrong these were my neighbors for years when i was a kid the the guy that owns this used to be the largest bell bonds company in the state of california called central valley bell bonds good good people and uh so anyway that being said the other problem that i i had with it is is you know of course the pistons being all screwed up uh, it had spun a rod bearing and uh, that was another problem the crankshaft was ruined so I uh, had to get a new crank for it uh, main bearings were fine didn't spin any mains so the block was good so anyway it's got a crank and then everybody's going why don't you just get another engine you can't get an old 4270 engine anymore it's non-existent these are, these are dinosaurs you have to fix it one way or the other okay so what had happened is the stupid reliance kit that we got because i couldn't even get a full kit from deer for this we had to get an aftermarket reliance kit well i tell you what some of this reliance stuff that i'm not very impressed with the pistons and liners i checked i thoroughly checked uh the ring end clearance the, you know the end gap clearance i checked uh the ods of the liners all kinds of shit because i'm just skeptical i've gotten some pretty bad quality stuff from some of this reliance stuff so I checked all that. Well, anyways, I'm trying to remember the liner O-rings that go on the block. Two of the the liners were correct, but they make two different blocks for these, and they which which takes two different liner O-rings. Well, two of the it's a four-cylinder engine. Two of those kits that they came in and that and the whole rebuild kit they put the wrong O-rings in for the wrong block. So I just ordered the right ones from Deer. Well, while I was waiting on that, I thought you know what. I got the crankshaft in the damn thing. At least I can flip it upside down and get something done and put the balancer on it. Well, I went to put the balancer on, which this is the balancer over here. I went to put the balancer on it, flipped it upside down, and I heard it go clunk. And I thought, huh, the hell's that all about? So, um, one of these, there's a bushing on each end of the shaft here. This runs off a gear on the crankshaft, this balancer does. So, I went to uh, uh, put it on, it went clunk, pulled it apart, and one of these shafts, I think it was this one here. One well, probably going to be way harder than the other one. Well, not really, but anyway, um, it has spun the bushings in the bore. 
and I knocked a bushing out of this other uh, I knocked a bushing out of this other shaft just to see if I could just get new bushings for it. Well, they just <laughs> they just slid in there and went like that. Basically, it spun them on the bore and ruined the bore on it. So we looked for like a week, and first cutting was coming up, which it's already pretty much done now. And these guys got all their hay put up. They had another backhoe with a loader on it that they did used, and so I got it all. I got it all back together. I, I well, let's see. I'm getting ahead of myself there. So I looked and we couldn't find one for a week and we were in a hurry trying to get it back together for first cutting. And so after hundreds of phone calls, it seems like to salvage yards all over the country because deers just continue this. It's not available anymore. I finally uh, called the owner and said, I can't find one. It's non-existent. And so I called the machine shop up there, and they said that they could possibly oversize the bore and then put a sleeve in it to where it'll take bushings again. I said, well, let's give it a try. So, hauled it up there, and they did. They got it done in a couple days. Got it back, and I put the bushings in it, but they didn't seem like they... They did go in a little bit harder on the one shaft they put the sleeve in than the other one did. Um, anyway... Um, so, I can't tell you the numerous problems, I, I might as well, we're making a video about it, I guess, um, so I got it all together, and just all these stupid boots that didn't come in the kit, these return line boots, they were all leaking, so then I had to order them all, and then just, I screwed up on one thing, and I was just being a moron, and I started pouring antifreeze in it, and I just noticed it was running out on the ground here. I put the wrong damn, there's two different gaskets for the water pump. I put the wrong gasket on it. I had to pull all the shit back off. I was like, you moron. And I put the right gasket on there and solved that problem. I had good oil pressure. So I was sitting there running it. Any, anyways, I was sitting there, I got all the leaks fixed and thought, well, all right, we're finally on the home stretch here, man. I'm finally going to get something out of this damn shop. And so it was sitting there running, maybe five minutes. And I had the valve cover off. Because I wanted to see, I always like running them a while with my valve cover off to make sure that my rockers are getting oil the way they're supposed to. Well, never getting oil, and I was just about ready to shut her down and uh, put the valve cover on her and ship it. Well, I saw some smoke start coming up through, you know, right where the push rods go down through the head. I started seeing smoke coming up through there, and I knew I've seen that before. And I was like, oh shit, I got a bearing. I got a bearing spinning. And I, before I could get to the key, I heard a hell of a noise, and I just shut it off. It was still turning over, but I knew something, something very detrimental had happened. Here comes Josie. What are you doing, babe? Causing troubles? Are you causing troubles out there, you crazy girl? So anyway, um... Dumped all the oil back out of it, drained drain the oil, pulled the filter out, because you know the filter is incorporated into the pan. So I pulled it all out of there, and this don't turn. It don't turn. That should turn freely, and it does not turn. So I'm going to tear this apart, and I'm going to show you when I tear it apart what happened. And let's see which shaft failed. Did it fail on the shaft? that the machine shop put the sleeve in, or did it fail on the shaft that didn't fail before? So I guess it's pretty easy to figure out which one's seized up just right here, but we'll still tear it apart. You can see that this one here has got a little backlash, it's moving. This one doesn't do anything at all. I would probably say this one's the one that went to hell on us. Well guys, I had to kind of edit this part here and put a voiceover because I was thoroughly pissed off and swearing continuously through this segment of the video and so what had happened is I'm showing you oil passages that go through that counterbalancer assembly and what happened is is those guys put a sleeve in it and I didn't catch it and I guess you got to check every damn thing they do when they do it because they do shit work uh, is they put a sleeve in there and didn't drill a hole in the sleeve 
so the bushings could get oil. You know, you'd have to drill a hole in that sleeve so the oil that was originally in the hole in the in the housing would go through the sleeve they put in there. As I'm showing you there, there's no hole in that. So it wasn't getting any oil. So, I, I don't know. It's just, uh, I don't know if we can save this balancer. It, it's really a bad deal because this balancer is nowhere to be found. This is like, you, you really, this is the part you really didn't want to screw up here. Uh, so I don't know this bushing I don't know if they could try to put another sleeve in it and try to do it again I mean it somewhat tight in there but not tight enough it's spun in there too you can see where it's spun I'm having my doubts but and and, and I will ad admit to partly I should have been more diligent and more thorough and checked their work I guess you know I put new bushings in on each end and thought, all right, she turns freely. Good to go, man. Well, so that'd be a lesson to all you young mechanics out there. You send stuff off to machine shop, you better check everything thoroughly that they did because chances are nine times out of a ten, I don't trust... You know, you tell me you're a machinist, you ain't telling me much. You really ain't telling me much. You know what? Uh... I, I, I was sitting here, I'm just going to go on a rant, but I was telling the owner of this backhoe the, some of the experiences that I've had with machine shops. I had a, I worked for a, a strawberry nursery, and uh, my first service truck for them was a 97 F350 with the 7.3 power stroke, and the head mechanic said, well, it's down near Crown Motors and Ready, and they put a new engine in it, Fat Ford Factory Reman. <laughs> So we drove down there and we got the damn pickup and brought it back up to McDowell. It's about an hour and a half drive. Well, I checked the oil before I left the parking lot at the dealer. Hang on, that my screen smudged. I got up here, wasn't even on the stick. I'm starting looking around. I still don't know oil leaks and it seemed like it kind of a little bit excessive smoke to me when I was looking in the mirrors as I was driving it. Anyway. Took six quarts of oil to get it back up to full. And you know those things only hold, what, 13, 12, 13 quarts? So it used half of its oil in an hour and a half trip. So I called down there and they said, yeah, bring it back down there. And we'll, we think it's your turbo. Well, I pulled, I, I did myself, I didn't tell them that, but I pulled the impeller, the hose off and turbo was fine. Okay, whatever. So I took it all the way back down there, used another six quarts of oil. Those dumb shits down there, they, they put a turbo on it. And of course, you know, those guys didn't rebuild the engine. It was a Ford factory remand. So Ford's sending them off to some remand facility, and then they do a bunch of half-ass shit work, and then they sell it to you for this big high-dollar price. So anyway, I, uh, I go get it, and I go back down there, and I get the, the service truck again. I get in it, I drive it back up here, Use the six quarts of oil. I call him back, said, hey, it's still using the same amount of oil as it did before you put the turbo on it. So, roll it back down there again, another six quarts of oil, and uh, uh, they decided to go ahead and have the, a little bit more of a thorough look at it, and they tore the engine out of it, and they figured out that the machine shop and whoever was working on it they had bored it 40 over and put 10 over pistons in it. So, I don't even know how it would run. You know, but it actually had pretty good power. Those rings must have been expanded out enough against the cylinder walls to where, you know, it was... But the oil control ring must have not been enough to let it... Something, you know, and it was, it was using oil, basically. Anyway, that's one of the horror stories. I could sit here and tell you horror stories about machine shops all day long. I had a... A 289 in a Ford Mustang, and I didn't know a whole lot about them. And this guy brought this thing to me, wanted me to go through the engine. Went through the, and I rebuilt that 289 from the ground up. I had the head rebuilt over at a machine shop in Medford, and I didn't know much about it. And that was when we, I was in a different shop, and that was we had like four or five days in a row of like 27, 30 below zero here, and in the winter time. Well, anyway, I'd just gotten the engine done that winter, and I just went into business for myself. 
and I was taking on anything I could get, you know, cars, pickups, motorcycle, you bring it to me, I'll fix her, you know. So anyways, I get her all fired up, man, she's running good, and all of a sudden, it starts missing. I said, oh, I shut it off. Well, on those 289 Fords, the, um, the rocker shaft hold downs are not threaded into the head. They're pressed in. Well, it had gotten so cold, and we put, we put a high lift cam in it, and we put stiffer valve springs with the combination i think of the cold cold weather shrinking everything up and the stiffer valve springs and the high lobe cam well what it was doing it was shoving the pressed in pins out of the head well i didn't even know that was like that you know because you pull the head off you just send it up there and anyway um i call over to the machine shop and he goes well we fixed two of those that were kind of coming undone and we put threaded ones in there. And I said, are you are you shitting me? He goes, what? And I said, you had that thing on the bench and you knew those came apart and you didn't take the rest of them out of there and thread them and do it right. And I said, now I'm the one eating all the labor on this shit, you asshole. You know, and they would not, and this is what I found with machine shops, they never, ever make it right, ever. They never make it right. You as the mechanic always eat it. So here's another story for you. Had a machine shop up in Klamath Falls. Had a TW25 Ford tractor engine. Was getting water in the oil. And uh, I tore the head off the thing. I really couldn't see anything. I really suspected electrolysis in the cylinder box somewhere. And it was getting into a cylinder. Couldn't really see anything on the cylinders. But I thought, you know what? I'll send it up to the machine shops. An automotive machine shop up there in town. And uh, I'll let them go over it and check it you know they they have all the tools necessary to do that well, i mean that guy i didn't even get out of town and that guy was telling me oh it's definitely your, something with your head gasket it's, it's leaking across and getting water in there oh okay you're the expert you know so we'd agreed it was a parent board block on those tw25 engines i said okay let's go ahead and board 20 over and i'll order 20 over pistons and and uh I says, go ahead and go through the cylinder head. So he went through the cylinder head and resurfaced it, valve stems, the guide, seals, all that good shit, new valves, and he bored the block, uh, decked it, sent it back to me, put it all back together. And it, th this is a this is a tractor engine and a, and a Ford TW25. You don't just in frame them. I mean, you have to split the tractor, the front axle and the nose and fuel tank away from that front of the block because it's all mounted to the front of the block as part of the framework and then you have to split the tractor from the transmission to the right in front of the cab to the block and you know it's it's 40 50 hours of the work to take split one in half put it take it all engine all apart put it back in there so i'm doing it all you know so i'm doing all this work putting it all back together i get this thing fired up runs for i all i did was start it i had it full water and uh, I just wanted to make sure my oil pressure was up. I usually, that's what I usually do every time. I'll start them and then I'll shut them off after I get good oil pressure. Then I'll check my oil again to make sure there's no glitter, nothing shiny in my oil, no water in oil, so on and so forth. So right away, I pulled the dipstick out and it was emulsified. It was mixed with water. It was worse than what it was. I was so livid, pissed off. I pulled the head back off of it and uh, ran, and there was still water in the jackets around the cylinders. So I ran, I was ro rotating the crankshaft while I was watching and I rolled number three cylinder down to uh, bottom dead center. And when I rolled it down, water started pissing right out of the hole when the, when the crown of the piston went below the hole. When he bored it, it made it worse. It had electrolysis in the block and he was too lazy to pressure check it and 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 do a thorough job or whatever they do i don't know if they pressure check them or mag them or what they do anyway so i i'm livid pissed off man i split the tractor that weekend and tear the engine completely back down down the bare block because i knew we we're gonna have to sleeve every hole you know so i call him expecting this guy to say to make things right with me and say, you know, I'll eat half of it if you eat half of it. I thought that'd be fair, you know. This, this is what this guy said to me. He said, well, it's not my fault that your customer didn't take care of his coolant system. 
That's what the son of a bitch said to me. I said, so you're going to hang this on me and the customer 100% when it was sent to you to find the water leak. So I hauled it to another machine shop, and they sleeved all six holes, and I did the entire probably 50, 60 hours worth of work for nothing. Absolutely nothing. Because that asshole up there would not make it right. You know? And, and I said here, we don't have enough video space to sit here and tell you about machine shops and the things that they've done to me. So if you tell me you're a machinist, you ain't telling me much.